Hi, this is the second lecture uh, of the general principles in orthopedic trauma. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself. So after we discussed the biomechanics of the plate in the previous lectures, we're going to speak about uh, biomechanics of the screws, nails, and external fixators. Uh, we're going to focus on some of the important uh, concepts. So in the screw, um, there is uh, some definition that I'd like to review with you, the inner diameter, or sometimes called the root diameter and the outer diameter. The outer diameter is um, the diameter uh, between the ends of the threads, and this is the, uh, the, the diameter that we use to describe the screw. So if you're saying 3.5 millimeter screw, that means that the outer diameter of this screw uh, between the end of the threads are 3.5 millimeter if you say 6.5 that means that the outer diameter is 6.5 the inner diameter or the root diameter it is the diameter of the screw without the strids uh, and this is diameter equals the diameter of the drill bit that we use to uh, put the uh, screw in the threaded hole so uh, most 3.5 screw for example will have an inner diameter of uh, 2.5 so the the inner diameter of the uh, screw which is 3.5 mostly 2.5 will be the same size of the drill bit that you use to put the threaded uh, uh, hole. So the screw have an outer diameter, inner diameter. Outer diameter is the diameter uh, between the ends of the threads. It's, uh, this is the, uh, the diameter that we use to describe the screw, 3.5 or 4.5 or uh, 4.0. That all this means that this is the uh, diameter between the ends of the screw. The inner diameter is the diameter uh, without the threads. And this is the diameter that we uh, uh, use uh, for the drill bit. Another important definition is the pitch. The pitch is the distance between uh, two threads um, and it equals uh, the amount of the screw advancement with uh, one full turn uh, of the screwdriver. So uh, pitch is the distance between two uh, threads and it will give you the amount that the screw will advance with, e with one full turn of the screwdriver. An important concept in the screw construct is the screw pull out strength. Um, the screw pull out strength means how much strength is needed to pull the screw out of the bone. Uh, this is important because the higher the screw pull out strength, that means that this is a more stable construct uh, and this construct can tolerate more uh, um, stresses before uh, uh, failing. Uh, the most important factor in the screw pull out strength is actually related to the bone quality. So patients who have good bone quality uh, will have a good screw pull out strength. Patients with osteoporosis um, will have a low uh, screw pull out strength and the construct will not be as stable. Uh, some of the uh, factors that uh, under control in the screw pull out uh, is the amount of the bone that underneath the threads. So how do you increase the amount of the bone under the threads? The, if you have a larger diameter, it means that the, the, the threads will be protruding more and smaller inner diameter that also will make uh, the threads uh, protruding more, uh, you will have more bone under the threads. And of course, if you have a smaller pitch, that means that we will have more threads and that you will have bone, bone, more bone underneath these threads. So how to increase the screw pull out strength? larger it means increasing the bone under the threads so you uh, you if you use a smaller inner diameter and larger outer diameter and a less um, uh, fine pitch means a smaller distance between the threads you will have more bone uh, as you will have more screw, uh, threads protruding the uh, shaft of the screw will be um, uh, less so you will have more bone in this area and the, uh, you have more threads uh, because the pitch is finer and so you will have more bone uh, in, uh, in between the threads. Uh, now we speak about the biomechanics of the nail. Uh, biomechanics uh, of the nail, there are uh, some important concepts. Uh, both the bending and the torsion rigidity of the nail is related to the fourth power of the diameter. What does this mean? Means, uh, for example, if you double the size or uh, double the diameter of the nail, uh, the bending and the uh, uh, torsion rigidity will increase 16 times because it's 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. So, 4 times that will give you 16 times more bending and torsion rigidity. Uh, some textbook will tell you that the torsion is related to the fourth power and the bending is related to the third power. Uh, it's actually a bending is also related to the fourth power um, in cases of the nail. However, it is the fourth power minus uh, the fourth power of the hollow part. 
uh, of the nail. So um, if this is a cannulated nail, in which most nails are cannulated, um, it is the fourth uh, power uh, of the nail uh, minus the fourth power of the hollow part. Um, so that's why some the textbook uh, will tell you it's related to the third power, uh, but uh, the correct uh, answer, it is actually related to the fourth power of the dam. Now, an important, other important concept of the uh, nail is the working distance. The working distance is the distance between the screws closest to the fracture on either side. So you have an intramedullary nail here in the tibia. Um, uh, this is the most proximal screw of the two distal locking screw. This is the proximal locking screw. So the distance between this one and this one will be called the working distance of the knee. Uh, the larger working distance will give you less stiff uh, the, the, if the working distance is smaller, means that the locking screw are closer to the fracture, that will give you a more rigid construct. So in order for you to have a less rigid nail construct, the working distance of the nail has to be larger, means that the, this, the screws has to be uh, further away from the fracture. Um, so how to make less rigid nail? Two of these concepts we discussed before, less thickness, of course we said the diameter the, uh, uh, of the nail uh, um, is related to stiffness. St uh, 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 the stiffness is to the fourth power. Uh, the bending and torsion stiffness is to the fourth power. So uh, the less thickness uh, of the nail, uh, the less stiff is the uh, uh, nail. Uh, another thing also we discussed is the working length, the um, uh, larger working distance, uh, meaning the further away the screws are, uh, the um, less rigid is the nail. Titanium nail are less rigid than stainless steel nail. Uh, an important concept uh, that we would like to uh, discuss is the dynamic screw hole, where to put the screw. Uh, this picture is from the AO website. Uh, so you have a fractured tibia here. Uh, this fracture is a little bit displaced, so you want to apply uh, a screw uh, in the dynamic uh, hole, in the dynamic motion. Um, the simplest uh, uh, way to remember, it has to be away from the fracture. So this is at the proximal part of the nail. So to be to put this screw in the correct, it has to be away from the fracture, meaning it has to be in the upper part of the hole or the proximal part of the hole as it applied here. So in order for you to apply a screw uh, in the dynamic uh, mode, you have to put it away from the fracture, away from the fracture. Like this example, this nail here, the fracture is here and you are putting the screw away from the knee. And you will see now, once the patient start moving and putting weight, this fracture um, will collapse. How it will collapse? By the nail going up. When the nail go up, uh, the screw, you can see here, the nail went up in relation to the uh, position that was put. Um, so uh, the nail, the screw now became in the lower part uh, of the hole. Um, the screw did not move. What moved is the whole nail. And if you see here, the screw did not move, the nail went up. So the screw relation to the hole changed from the uh, upper part of the hole to the lower part of the hole. So in order to apply the screw in the dynamic fashion, it has to be in the upper away from the fracture. So in this example, it will be in the upper part of the hole. After it collapse, it will be now close to the fracture, which is the lower part of the hole. We're going to speak now about biomechanics of external fixator and how to make an external fixator more rigid. Uh, there are factors related to more rigid external fixator related to the pins and to the rods. Uh, for the pin, uh, it's the pin diameter, a uh, number of the pins, uh, spreading the pins into the, each fragment, um, the closer pin to the fraction. Uh, so, uh, for example, here is the distal uh, part of the fracture. Um, when you apply the pins in a spread fashion, uh, that will give more rigid fixation. Uh, the closer uh, uh, the pin to the fracture from either side, uh, that will give all, uh, more also a, a more rigid fixation. Uh, for the rods, uh, increasing the number of the rods, which, meeting, uh, which means like putting two rods or stacking the rods. So instead, in, uh, instead of one rod connecting between proximal and distal, uh, you can put two rods that will increase the uh, rigidity. Um, getting the uh, rod closer to the bone, uh, which basically means uh, putting the rod closer to the skin, uh, also increase the rigidity. However, um, uh, you have to make sure that there is enough uh, space between the rod and the skin to allow for swelling. 
thing. Uh, uh, also, thicker rod uh, is more rigid than thinner rod. And of course, multi-planar fixation in both the rods and the pins uh, will give more rigid fixation. So to obtain more rigid external fixator, pin factor, increasing the pin diameter, increasing the number of the pin, spreading the pin in the fragments, and uh, uh, putting uh, the pins closer to the fracture on either side. Uh, uh, for the rods, uh, increasing the number of the rods, meaning uh, using more than one rod, decrease the distance between the rod and the bone, uh, making the rod closer to the skin, uh, thicker rods, and multiplanar fixation. Uh, the most important factor among all this is the diameter of the pin. It has exponential effect. However, in general, uh, we don't go for a much larger uh, pin diameter uh, because uh, this has the adverse effect of uh, um, uh, increasing uh, the stress riser uh, because a bigger hole has to be drilled into the bone. Uh, so despite that this is the most important factor in the rigidity, uh, usually uh, we try to stay away from the larger pins like six millimeter pins. Um, especially in the diaphysis because it can uh, cause to uh, fractures uh, due to stress riser. The factors that are related to increasing the rigidity of ring external fixator is very similar to uh, the ones for the regular fixator. Uh, so increasing the number of points of fixation, either half pin or wires. Um, uh, one thing specific in the ring fixator is tensioning the wire. Tensioning the wire means that you tighten the wire from one side and then on the other side you pull on the wire with a specific device called the tensioner. So you make your wire tensioned and that will make your fixation stronger. Um, uh, um, lowering the the size of the ring is exactly the same as bringing the rod closer to the bone because when you lower the size of the ring it will be closer to the bone. Um, uh, wire spreading the points of fixation into the segments uh, and putting some wires and pins closer to the fracture also this will make your uh, rigid fixation. Uh, uh, stacking the uh, rings means that you instead of putting one ring you put two rings on each segment uh, and also increasing the number of the connections between uh, the rings on each side. All these will increase the rigidity of the, of the ring type of the external fixator uh, and as we said it's very similar to the regular external fixator the only one which is specific for the ring fixator is tensioning the wires. Other important uh, aspects of the biomechanics of the external fixator uh, is related to the pin uh, we call this usually half pin because it does not cross to the other side of the bone um, uh, the half pin, uh, when it's uh, coated with the, the thread, when the threads are coated with the hydroxy uh, that actually increases the fixation of the pin inside the bone. Uh, it increases the torque uh, needed for the distraction, and actually it has another uh, advantage. It decreases the loosening that happens uh, after pin tract infection. So um, a half pin uh, like this one, uh, you, uh, the threads can be covered with HA um, hydroxy apatite, uh, and this will increase the fixation of the pin to the bone um, and increase the torque needed for extraction and also would decrease the amount of loosening that happened with pin tract infection. Uh, the weak point of uh, the half pin or this area, uh, the junction of the shank with the threads, uh, that's why it's advised that this area uh, to be buried inside the bone um, and it will increase uh, the stiffness of the pin. So it's advised that the threads you don't just put like a part uh, part of the threads into the bone that you put all the threads into the bone uh, and have the uh, junction between the thread and the shank uh, buried into the proximal cortex so to, to double the stiffness of the pin. Um, so you, it's advised not to have a very long threads in a, a small cortex because that will have uh, this area outside the body and it can break. Thank you for listening to this lecture and following my channel and there will be more lectures for other topics in uh, Orthopedic.